So, welcome to the series of Health Bites. Um, our primary series talked about an overview of how to look after your teeth. Today we're going to talk a little bit about medical conditions and how it's linked to oral hygiene. So welcome back Adelina, nice to see you again. Thank you. Um, what's become very controversial in the recent times is dementia and brain disease. Mm -hmm. uh, people are worried about getting dementia, Alzheimer's, and I understand from recent articles in the press that there's actually a link between oral hygiene and Alzheimer's. That was quite, quite a shock to me really. Um, is that something you could talk us through as to how that would happen? I'd like to say it was shocking to me, but having done the 23 years ago when I was doing my training and I was doing the literature review on gum disease and systemic health, um, I came across a paper back then that mentioned a link to Alzheimer's. 23 years ago? To it. Well, yes, I guess 23 because I was still in training and yeah. I've been qualified 22 years this year. So to me, although it wasn't quite, it wasn't that shocking. Um, and in fact, uh, I feel quite excited about it. The fact that it's more in the mainstream um, media. Um, in fact, there's one particular article written by Dr. Mosley, um, and the man famous for the 5-2 diet, which is also I'm a fan of. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I, I refer many to, of my patients to that article. And what I've found in the past is that I've been seeing patients, in fact, I, I recall one particular patient I've been seeing for four years. And, uh, and I was getting a bit frustrated because no matter how much information I was giving this gentleman, I felt he wasn't quite engaging in um, improving his oral hygiene. So one day I asked him to come by my computer and Google the, this specific article. And uh, the, the title of the article was the only thing that I'm doing is protecting me from gum disease, um, sorry, a dementia, heart disease and stroke flossing. Wow. Um, three months later, this gentleman came back and he, he was just, uh, it was a complete change. Yeah. So I was like, wow, what changed? And he turned around and he said, it was that article he gave me. It was, it was the fact when you, you mentioned the mention that was the trigger. Interesting. So it changed his behavior. Because it, it, of does, it yeah. does. And um, I, you know, it's my, I guess, goal in life to inform as many people as I can yes. about the fact that when I'm seeing you for a hygiene visit, I'm not just seeing you to clean your teeth, to make your teeth sparkle or to whiten them. Yeah. I generally want to uh, look after you yeah. as a whole. Yes. Um, and, um, and this is why it's so exciting to work in a practice like Levitas because often, and in fact, uh, a few weeks ago, I saw a gentleman that I was able to pass on to you mm. because I recognized that maybe he had the starts of uh, diabetes. Yeah. Because what many people don't realize that when you come and see his uh, for hygiene visit, we're also checking your medical history. We're checking for signs uh, of uh, systemic disease, such as diabetes. Um, also, um, gum disease is very much um, linked to respiratory disease. Because if you think about it, if there's a lot of bacteria in your mouth and you're breathing in that bacteria, cool. it's going to yeah. have a causative effect yeah. on your lungs. Can I uh, go back to the Alzheimer's link? Because oh, that, yes. um, that is just quite extraordinary. What is the link? What happens in the brain from the mouth to increase the risk of Alzheimer's? Okay, so the uh, main bacteria that causes gum disease is, uh, I'll call it P. gingivalis, or por Porphyromonas gingivalis. But Porphyromonas gingivalis. Correct. But from now on, we'll call it P. gingivalis. Yeah, much easier. <laughs> it's much, much easier. So there's been a study in the States in uh, Louisville um, Dental uh, University that showed that um, 
people that had died from Alzheimer's had um, amyloid plaques that essentially is produced to combat um, gingiva, gingiva pains, which is a toxin that is produced by P. gingivalis. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So essentially it shows that uh, bacteria can travel through uh, your body and attack the, uh, the uh, other tissues like the brain. In turn, the brain produces amyloid plaques and that is the cause of it. Interesting. So this bacteria enters the blood supply, creates a toxin Mm -hmm. that crosses the blood-brain barrier and initiates beta amyloid plaque. Goodness. Yes. Is it too late for people? I don't think so. It's never too late. Yes. Uh, well, that's quite a finding and something as simple as good oral hygiene mm -hmm. can reduce that risk. Absolutely. Would you, how often would you have to come and see a dental hygienist to, to make sure you're, you're okay? Well, initially, that is determined at the first uh, visit. Okay. Obviously, for someone that uh, only needs a slight uh, change in their, their routine and the disease is only localized to the gums, meaning just gingivitis, um, that can, gingivitis can actually be treated. Yeah. It's, rever it's reversible because gingivitis is only affecting the gingiva. Yeah. It has, it's when it's left untreated that goes on to become periodontal disease, periodontitis, that unfortunately there's no treatment Goodness. for periodontitis. Um, and that's when the, um, the tissues that are supporting the tissues, uh, the tooth rather, um, is getting destroyed. So it's important that we, you know, it, if a patient is complaining of bleeding gums, they should come and be well. They sh should seek help straight away. Yes. Unfortunately, um, most people say that their uh, gums bleed when they brush. Yes. And I find it alarming that it doesn't alarm them. Right. Maybe they <laughs> think they're brushing too hard. But it shouldn't happen, is what you're saying? Yeah. So bleeding gums is a problem. It is a problem. Mm. So that is the the first sign that there's something wrong. In fact, if you uh, most uh, professionals say if you notice bleeding in your urine or yeah. it, it, what do they say? Go and seek medical help. Interesting. We don't. And when you that. think when you think about gums, you don't hear if you have bleeding gums and go and seek help straight yeah. away. Yes. And I think that that message should be put across Without, more. I agree. Well, it's certainly it's something that was not on my radar, but it certainly yeah. is now. Mm. So that's, that's fascinating about that link. Um, now, just about this bacteria, something that intrigued me. Can we test for this bacteria by swabbing or doing something? Can we see who's more prone than somebody else? Or do we assume everyone's got this bacteria? So. Uh, gum disease is more the, it's the most prevalent disease in the world. Okay. Anyone at any point of their lives will have gingivitis. Okay. But it's ensuring that gingivitis doesn't okay. progress. progress. Yes, there is some tests that can be carried out to check how much bacteria you have and if you're predisposed for the, uh, for the disease. Um, however, some of that bacteria that causes um, periodontal disease is anaerobic bacteria. So there's no, uh, I believe, and maybe I can, you know, I could be corrected on that. So it's also very hard to clearly identify yes. quantity. Yeah. So I guess what you're saying is a bit like gut health. I believe yeah. that everyone's got bad gut health. Yes. Yeah because hormones, manipulation of food, preservatives. So I guess we should also assume that everyone's got an element of gingivitis, mm. sometimes yeah. more than others. So really, we should all be seeing hygienists on a regular basis. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so by doing so, we can prevent these chronic diseases from, from developing. Interestingly, uh, I think, I feel that there's more people with gum disease than there is with um, 
well, in certain demographics. Yes. Because it would be unfair for me to say that there's less uh, decay. Yes. In fact, in certain demographics, there's actually more decay. Yes. Uh, especially after COVID. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, Is that because people didn't see dentists during COVID? Absolutely. And they and started pulling their own teeth out. Yes, but not only that, also if you think about it, uh, people were at home more, mm. so they, they were more eating more. Uh, maybe after a while, and I mean, it's unfair for me to say because I don't have children, but I have cousins <laughs> that, uh, you know, sometimes it's very easy to just give them a, a treat to keep the peace. And I think there was a lot of that that because of the environment that most people were in uh, maybe they were indulging a, a bit more along sweets and uh, squashes yeah. well all the sorts of Sugar. things that you know one should uh, reduce yeah so before we finish this series one question i wanted to ask you being from the medical world yeah. a solution to bacteria is antibiotics this particular antibiotic bacteria you're talking about is there a antibiotic you can take, like Flagyl, to eliminate it? Should we take all take a course once in a while to stop it happening? Well, that's a very, very interesting question, and I'm going to answer it as best as, as best as I can as a dental hygienist <clears throat> who is not able to prescribe antibiotics. So, my answer to that is that essentially yeah there is going to be some cases that you do need some uh, antibiotics conjunctive to the treatments the hygienist provides but usually that is uh, prescribed by one of the dentists but the point i want to make it clear is that if the right uh, oral hygiene instruction is given the treatment is um, carried out as well. Not everyone needs antibiotic cover. And in fact, in dentistry, we very much um, don't want to be overusing antibiotics because we also know that antibiotics do have its limitations. And not only that, um, I, I personally believe that they're being overused. Okay for our det detriment. Yeah, interesting. Well, I, <clears throat> we're a great believer in the body healing itself. Mm. So I guess the take home message here is to reduce your chances of Alzheimer's. Again, good oral hygiene. Yes. Really important. Um, make the initial appointment with you, which will then give an idea of how many appointments you need yeah. after that. Um, so that's that's been fantastic. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Our next episode is on oral hygiene and how it's impacted by hormones.